Recording in progress. Okay, I heard and that. And streaming. No. There we go. Hey, everybody. It's the Booze and PJJ podcast. We're starting early, really early, but we're also starting late because uh, it's a Sunday instead of a Saturday. It's okay, though. Uh, we're waiting for Frankie and Wole, and Frankie's going to run the conversation today. But until then, it's me and my friend Norman. Hey, guys. So, Norman, you went. To, you said, <laughs> going back conversation, yeah. you yeah. said that you were... You had some fun at the ocean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, went on a, a family trip uh, at Virginia Beach, and then my cousin-in-law, young lady, and then she was on her uh, what is that thing called again? <laughs> uh, paddleboard. Paddleboard, yeah. And then uh, she was busy taking pictures and all that. We we're having fun, right? And then all of a sudden. We realized we're in the deep side of the ocean, and then everybody started dr- drifting away. I I was on, on a kayak, and then there's a uh, abandoned ship, like tons of them, like uh, more than ten. So really? many of them. I don't know how. I don't know how many. On Virginia, this is a this is a state park, though. So it's a, it's like a private beach. Oh. And okay, so then it's like. <clears throat> And then once we reach that point, you know, when you see an obstacle in the middle of the water, the waves start try to like go to the sideways, right? Try to avoid nice, nice bottle. Try to avoid the obstacle, right? And go through, go go around the obstacles. And then that's where the problem from. So then uh, she was drifting to another direction, okay? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden we disappeared because. We were on the backside of the ships. So then he was, she was so panicked. Then was just, I was padding my kayak to her. And then I uh, asked her to uh, tie his, uh, tie her, uh, what is that called? The, the string to my, to my kayak. So I dragged her all the way back. Ten one hour, hour, nonstop, like paddling. Nonstop, one hour, almost one hour. And then drag her to the not too deep side of the ocean but the, it's okay side you know so mm-hmm. it's, the wave is not that strong and then we slowly we are getting back very slow i very slow i think if i paddle another hour i can get back so at that point my wife saw us really slow struggling and then she asked a guy who was about to leave from the port with her with his boat a personal boat the shipping 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 boat right Mm-hmm. And then uh, I said, if you're not rushing, just, can you just get them? They're pretty far. And like I said, okay, no problem. Funny part. Okay, very funny. My, my wife said, sir, if you're not rushing, would you please go get them? And this guy, you know what his response? What? He said, I'm I'm not Russian. I'm Ukrainian. Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> he, was, he misheard my wife. He's like, I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing. My wife asking if you're not rushing, it's okay. We can leave, right? They're getting back slowly. But if you're not rushing, but this guy said, I'm not Russian. I'm Ukraine. <laughs> That's oh my gosh. He, uh, he, he was just making a bad joke. I mean, I don't, I think he's Ukraine. I asked him, his name is Andrew. And I said, I'm from Ukraine. I said, yeah, I got his phone number. I sent him like 25 dollars Starbucks uh, gift card uh, mm-hmm. through the cell phone. Yeah. Good. They're on, yeah, they are, they were on a camper, like a, like RV, right? RV, yeah, that's mm-hmm. RV. And then with their bow, they're having fun, I think. Or I think they are kind of like rich people who escaping from this war, <laughs> maybe, who have access to America, you know? I don't know. But anyway, I just sent him like $25 gift card and then said thank you. So basically, that was something, man. You, yeah. guys, you guys went to the beach for some fun. Yep. And you mm-hmm. went too far out in the water, and then everybody yep. panics because everybody knows yep. what's in the water and in, in, in the deep ocean. Yeah, yeah, very deep actually. Yeah, we're disappearing. We got the backside of the ship. You know, it's just, it's just not fun anymore. So my wife couldn't see us. Well, how did you? So I was like, how did you get uh-huh. out there in the first place? Were you just like, paddling too so, far out? So, uh, uh, there's a abandoned ship. I said right. So I mentioned earlier, so the abandoned ship and the port, let's say it's like a, that's the distance that we, that's, that's the, that's, that's where we should not go beyond the abandoned ship, right? 
But the problem is here. So if you pass the midpoint, the ocean, the, the wave is stronger because volume of the volume of the water is a lot, right? It's much, much more than the shallow part. Mm -hmm. So when they have one wave, they push you like, I think they push you. If you're in a shallow part, they push you for one meter. Right. If you're in the, in the deep side, it's a big amount of water. It push you maybe more, maybe two meters. They send you away that far. Mm -hmm. So it, trip, it doubles your effort to get back. So once you pass the midpoint, the midpoint, which is I'm talking about the midpoint of the deep and shallow. Right. Yeah. So then if you pass the midpoint, okay. And then you're going to really drifting away from that point. So, uh, yeah. And then from the midpoint, that's the point that also, that's the point where people start having fun. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Let's take a picture. Let's take a selfie and all that. All of a sudden you're realizing, oh, we're close to the ships. And from the ship, from the point of the ships, so the water gonna go go around the ship, go around the ship. So they they, they push you away to the sideways, and then you push real far. Out. So mm -hmm. that's that's not the fun part. I was like, oh no, we're on this point. Oh, that's not fun anymore. So let me get her. I was like, don't leave, don't leave. I said, like, I'm not leaving. Don't worry, <laughs> I got you. Oh, and you know, I I stay away yeah. from water. Um, I went to where was I? Oh, dude, that was at uh, Hilton Head down in, I think it's South uh, Carolina. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I was out the beach, mm -hmm. have fun, mm -hmm. went out the water, ended up walking too far. I was like neck deep in water, right? And I look up and I see fins coming at me. Ooh. And I was like, <laughs> so I was thinking to myself, oh, well, my time is done because there's no way I'm getting back out of the water quick enough. Oh my gosh, man, that's serious, man. I would, I would, I would, I would like, I think I, I will panic. I definitely panic. Dude, I just stood there. And once they got like super close, I saw a third fin pop up out of the water and they all just turned suddenly. And then I, I was watching them and then I saw one of them dive out and realized it was a dolphin. Okay. Yeah. They sound so, like dolphin. There was a group of them, right? Yeah. Right. Like at first okay. I just saw two fins coming at me. So I was thinking, oh, that's not fun. two okay. really big sharks. Fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> My time on this earth is over. But um, no, nah, they ended up being dolphins. So I just turned my happy self around and walked back to the water. And I didn't go back in the rest of the time we were there. We were there another like three or four days. I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, nope, yeah. I'm good. I mean, water, water is just, it's fun, but it's dangerous. I mean, it's really dangerous. And then I realized that when you have a, I'm not bad at a sense, sense of direction, but in the ocean, it's mm -hmm. things change. It's different. You yeah. need to have, you need to have something to look at, you know, and then you have to be set up that uh, object as a as a mark mark or something, you know, and then you go according accordingly. You don't go just drifting, and when you're drifting, you don't really realize you're drifting away. Mm -hmm. But that's a problem. So you have to constantly watching some. Oh, see that I'm I'm far far. The port the port looks smaller. You have to realize. Oh, I'm going far. I have to go back. I have to go back. And then funny part is like that's that was my first time ocean kayaking. <laughs> oh my gosh. First time. First first time. Yeah, you just gotta watch yeah. out for it because oh my god, I'm, I'm glad I'm training. Otherwise, I don't think I have I have the strength to come back back to BJJ, right? So uh, like we really we really work out. I really every time I go to the gym after sparring and it's, mm -hmm. he asks us to like push up and all that. Mm -hmm. What is that called? Burnout? Burnout in the end? Yeah. Yeah, so that was really helpful, man. Otherwise, I don't think I can get back. Well, I keep telling people, you know, <clears throat> mm -hmm. especially when you get older, you have to you have to stay in shape. Exactly, yeah. It's more important than the it's, young guys who stay in shape. Yeah. Very, mm -hmm. very important. Um, couldn't, you couldn't agree anymore, man, since I'm old. Yeah, yeah it's, you know, when you, as you start to age, if you don't stay in shape, if you mm -hmm. fall out of shape and just become very lazy, it's mm -hmm. way, in my experience, it was extremely hard to get back into shape. Mm -hmm. yeah, extremely yeah. hard. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, and the reason why I bring this up was I saw a couple today at a bakery. I went to the bake a bakery to get some cupcakes for my sister who finished chemotherapy. And I saw oh, this couple. Sorry to hear that. No, it's, it's fine. She's good. Okay. Uh, um, I saw a couple with their two kids, mm -hmm. and they were obese. 
like mm -hmm. super obese and they spent like seven hundred dollars on cupcakes scones cookies like what? <laughs> all of the stuff right they they bought out the entire stock of specific things at this bakery and man, that's crazy man that's nobody does that man in the it, world i'm telling you it was around the world yeah right it was nuts because you know i was standing there and i didn't have my family with me so it was just me and behind me was two moms that had their kids and mm -hmm. you know the stuff that i wanted to get for my sister you know oh, i wanted man, to get fun, her, huh? yeah. yeah i wanted to get her four specific cupcakes two mm -hmm. of them were gone because these mm -hmm. this, this family bought the entire stock of it so i ended up getting two key lime and two raspberry for her which you know that's half of what my object objective was but these kids wanted cookies all the cookies were bought out like all mm. of them you know the only the only thing that they didn't pick up were uh some of the key lime cupcakes some of the raspberry cupcakes like i mentioned like mm -hmm. some orange scones and like one or two other things everything else they bought the entire stock of i mean that's not i mean it's more than obese first of all it's not cool anymore right you, you don't want to buy everything out right right so i have to say save some for others yeah <laughs> you have to have considerations you know, yeah uh, you know and you know i was telling my sons about it and they said that they were evil i was like they're not evil you know we don't really know much about them yeah, yeah, yeah. at at best they're inconsiderate and at worst they're just extremely greedy you know they saw that there was other people waiting oh everybody frankie's here mm -mm. okay hello can you see me can you see yeah. me hello and, yes sir and, yes sir uh, uh, uh. sorry guys there we go i was looking for my headphone and i had to use these uh cheapos real quick yeah <gasps> Hey guys, the just purpose. just a warning: we are streaming and we are recording. We started a little. Me and Norman started a little early. All right, cool. Whatever. I'm kidding. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi Frankie. Hi. Hi Wally. Hi. Hey, what's up? So, what's uh, up this year, guys. Mm -hmm. We won't delay anymore. Um, I'll do the introduction, and Frankie, you said you wanted to uh, run things tonight. Sure. Yeah. All right. So we'll do the introductions as usual, and then Frankie will run the conversation mm -hmm. i will go first so this week i didn't really train much but i just taught several classes um <laughs> i got some rounds in in the no gi class on friday so that was fun i did a little bit of boxing at, at the uh, 6 p.m class friday and i'm drinking ginger ale and rum mm -hmm. out of a gigantic mug it's very ginger ale and rum. okay yeah but um, I feel like I'm gaining a little bit of weight, so I do need to to get some workout in. <laughs> Anyways, Wale, how are you doing? Doing okay. Uh, I've not really trained this week. I've been all over the place. Went to uh, went to Virginia for you know beach and fun stuff Ooh. like that. <laughs> yeah, it's because okay. he's not so, from Virginia. <laughs> well, Sadly. my mom, my mom's family is from Virginia, so I, I have don't, Virginia don't, blood in me. Oh, wait a minute, that, that, that does not count, yeah, sir. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Of course, it does. you don't. You don't even live in the state of Virginia, so it shouldn't count. Okay, but kinda... I'm, I'm, I'm more from Virginia than you are. Oh, <laughs> oh snap! That's a damn lie. Because I was a, born, a... I was born and raised here, sir. Oh, okay, sir. <laughs> that sounds like a, uh, that sounds like a threat. <laughs> No, I'm just joking. Go ahead, Will. So, um, I actually have lost some weight, a couple of pounds, and I'm drinking. I almost drank gin and um, and what's it called? I'm brown, but I have bourbon and coke. That's pretty good. All right, Norman, how you doing? Good. I'm doing good. Uh... I didn't train last week. Like Wally, I was at Virginia Beach as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, mm. lately, lately, I mean, I got injuries, so uh, mm. shoulders, knees. So been. Um, we talked about uh, that. You still have that shoulder injury? 
Shoulder getting better now. Yeah, knees are the only knees left. And then, uh, yeah, getting better. And then I uh, didn't train this week, so I'm ready to go back next week. You should uh, work, work, work a little harder. Massage therapist and... Uh... Oh, man. So you know what happened? So uh, my father-in-law, he was used to be... He had his licensed massage therapist. And then since he got older, he didn't do that anymore. He started... He became a nurse, right? Uh -huh. All right. And then, uh, yeah. And he hasn't been uh, massaging for a long time. And I was like, I couldn't lift my shoulder up this time. This is on a Virginia Beach trip. And then he was doing something magical, man. He fixed it. He fixed it, man. I was like, and of course, he was even a doctor when, they, when he was in Mongolia, you know? Uh, After uh. I came to America, my doctor involves a lot of like, I don't know, school, right? All that yeah. and license uh -huh. and all that. So yeah, he didn't, he didn't do that. So then he became like a massage therapist. He was RN for a while and then Man, it's a, people who learn autonomy are different than these like people who just run a massage business. I feel like so yeah. very different, totally. Yeah, you massage, yeah. massage me for five minutes and everything worked out. Just yeah, like you got magic, you gotta know, man, magic. Yeah, you gotta know the right people. There's people out there that just like whatever, whatever. But then there's I people there that like scratching you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then and then there's people that like really know how to break down the tissues and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, and then he was yeah. he was telling me this in the end. He was like he was saying that, oh, on your shoulder, behind your shoulder blade, there's like certain muscle called blah blah blah. That thing's yeah. something wrong with that. And then he yeah. was saying that. I was like, okay, man. I, I, I was like, why didn't you tell me this early? I should go. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I'm drinking beer. I'm a beer guy. Blue Moon. Yeah, mm. I have a little rum as well. Yeah, oh, that, that's the a rum good, from Haiti. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What is the it? Blue Moon. Blue moon, blue, yeah. blue moon's safe, man. You can't go wrong with blue moon. That's, that's, that's my that's my my guzzling beer. Yeah, I tried so much beer lately, and then I was at the uh, Kipto Kipto. What is it? Kipto Pecky State Park at Virginia Beach. I don't mm -hmm. know where were you at. Uh, I, I was actually was at it? uh, I was at Hampton Beach, so it's like maybe it's maybe like 30, 40 minutes from Virginia Beach. Oh, okay. did you guys okay. did you guys know that there's a Gracie Jiu Jitsu in Virginia Beach? Oh yeah, no, I'm I don't sure, know. I don't I'm know sure that. there was. I don't know. Right, like like right behind the boardwalk towards like first and second street. Oh, really? I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh okay. I, you know that's a that's a great thing. You can always find the BJJ gym anywhere you go. Yeah. That's um, right, you can go yeah. to the North Pole and someone's practicing. Dude, time, time. if there was a BJJ mm -hmm. gym at the North Pole, I'm gonna go visit it. Like great, I, wa I want the T-shirt. I want the rash guard. <laughs> I'm going. Gracie North Pole. It, it's their mascot has to be a polar bear. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Frankie, That's how about you doing? I'm ready to work hard next week. Yeah. How you doing, Frankie? I'm, I'm doing good. Wake's been uh just here. I kind of was I was going down a little bit, and then I just um with work and whatnot. Uh, um, things have been. A little bit hectic, but uh, kept Are you still doing uh, intermittent fasting, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That tell you what, once you get past that, uh, the habit, like you break that, you you go towards that habit plateau, it's like, okay, this is I'm used to this, I'm used to this, I'm used to this. So, it was good, it helps. Tell you what, yeah, I gotta it's try it out, yeah. 12 o'clock comes around, tell you what, I'm scuffing down though. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, uh, Muay Thai classes are uh, at Chantilly and May is, is really good. Um, have some guys that are willing to compete, but we got to put them through some uh, tests before we can release our, our boys out there into the world of uh, competition. The the mats, Matt 1 and Matt 2, they're, uh, they got potential. Yeah, man, they're committed, man. Those guys are, uh, are um, really taking the whole Muay Thai martial arts aspect uh, very serious, very, very serious. These guys are, like, really into it, looking into the history of Muay Thai, look at like, the, the, the background of stuff, you know? So it's it's really it's really good. And I, I, I know they dipped their toes into the no-gi class here and there and the MMA class that we offer on Fridays. Um, but those guys are my top, top guys right now. Um, and uh, there's another couple few, like uh, the two uh, Wilsons. This is weird. Like, it's two Matt and two Wilsons. And I'm like, <laughs> what? 
that's so, not even, that's not a common name either, Wilson. Well, no. So, uh, so I I, I mess with them <laughs> like if they're both together, I'm like, hey Wilson, they both look, or hey Matt, they both look. <laughs> so, I gave them their nicknames already, so they 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 know what's going on, and uh, yeah, that's pretty. And I'm drinking a uh, rum and coke. Mm -hmm. I see rum is the drink of choice tonight. Yes. So uh, actually, before we hand it off to Frankie, I kind of want to get uh, Matt one and Matt two and Big Wilson in a in a grappling industries competition for Nogi, in like a couple months, like a couple months down the road. Like I um, want to see, see how they stack up because they're they're learning really quickly. Yeah, I want them to. Right now, I'm uh, I'm putting them through the ringer real quick. Um, they're going through a, uh, like a phase where I need to test them out to see how they are, and then and then maybe we'll can open up to some more. But for right now, I want them to focus straight strictly on Muay Thai. Yeah, um, I I know the one of the Wilsons, one of the Wilsons competed up in Taiwan, and um, he did pretty okay. Uh, we got to work on a couple of things, and the other Wilson is uh, he's really he's pushing towards becoming like a Muay Thai MMA as well. And the other two, the mats, I think they're gonna sh strictly do Muay Thai. Yeah, so so we're good on that. But uh, you guys are interested on the topic that I brought up mm -hmm. that I, sure. I, I had. So I had, it's it's pretty much two, but in one. Um, I was having a conversation. And I'll just let's just backtrack anyway. Do any of you guys take supplements or enhancements or anything like that? Uh, I mean, like vitamin supplements and stuff. Okay. Sort of, yeah. All right. Um, I take rum as a supplement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Me beer. <laughs> Me beer. Yeah. Um. So I had uh, like back in the day, I used to take like when I used to like lift. I used to take a lot of protein and and. Yeah and pre-workouts those were the only two things I, I never dipped in my toes into creatine and all this other stuff that they got out there and i was having a conversation with one guy and he's telling me that he's all natural all natural all natural and i was like you know what? that's not a bad thing you know but then came into the sup uh, supplement uh phase um how people do supplements and they abuse it mm -hmm. I don't know if you so guys are you're, you're ever... talking about. Are you talking about like daily? Okay, I don't. Hey, are you talking about stuff like oh daily vitamins or, or are you talking more like supplements like like you're saying the creatine the like the creatine acids and, like that. and all that but stuff the mm. creatine and stuff like that and I don't know if you guys noticed but I don't know there's a trend out there and uh, they use they they take they're taking pre workout okay which is almost like caffeine like yeah. and like the times a thousand. Um, like that Jack, you, you've heard Jack 3D stuff with Jack. Yeah. Right. The C Dude, I, I, took, all that I took that stuff one time and I was wired. It <laughs> fucked me up. So I was just like, I'm not touching that stuff. So I got a st story for you, but let me let me let me uh let me finish this up real quick. I've noticed people that they start taking the, the what is called shotgun. Okay. They take a scoop mm -hmm. of pre-workout, ram it down the throat, and then drink water behind it. Mm. Well, that's not the right way to do it. Mm. The right way to do it is you take yourself a big old shaker or whatever, scoop it in, and then you slowly start drinking it so it can last you. But these guys so, are doing it like it's freaking. Is there a reason why do they think it's going to like absorb I, quicker? I don't know. Or? I don't know. I don't know if it's a mental thing or it mm. does hit. It makes it uh, hit you quicker because if you take like I, like you like you said before. When you take that stuff, it gives you like this burst of energy and you start itching. Start itching and stuff like that. Yeah, it's crazy. That's the cocaine, man. Wow. <laughs> that is yo. Yeah, so basically. Easy. So when I when I would take it, I would do the shaker and I would add four scoops. I had to get off of that stuff, man. And then yeah. it was it was so bad that I couldn't sleep mm -hmm. because I was so jacked up on it. And <laughs> wow. and um like when I got off of it, I had the worst headache, man. Like for like three, four days, and my and like I slept for like 12, 12 to sixteen hours. It also gives you bad poops. Yeah, <laughs> apparently it's it was crazy. So what I basically pretty much want to say, man, sometimes these guys they're they're advertising, you know, crazy things to, I don't know, to entice people to do it. 
but people should really stop doing that kind of stuff. So because when I was because I did a, I did I did a spar session and I I, I shotgun shotgun one time, man. Man, I was hurting people left to right because it was I was just on a hundred percent, man. And it was crazy. So um I started taking pre-workout uh, mm-hmm. kind of incorrectly for about a month. And um, it was when I was, uh, it was a couple of years ago, I was uh, working late Monday, Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday. So I couldn't make the main classes at Pentagon. So I started doing the Tuesday, Thursdays, which was no gi. But everybody there was faster than me. So I figured, and I heard somebody suggest I take pre-workout. So I started taking pre-workout, but I was taking it incorrectly. I was putting in a uh, shaker, but I wasn't putting enough water in. Mm. So it was like a concentrated kind of syrup, I guess you could right. say. <laughs> Dude. That sounds so disgusting. I, I, I kid you not. I was about 220 at that time. Like it was right before I lost that extra 20 pounds. Not only did my skin itch, my I my jaw was like stuttering like I was cold. Mm-hmm. And I was so amped that... I was overshooting everything. Like my body mm-hmm. movements were too, not uncontrolled, but if I wanted to move like three inches, for example, I would, I was so amped. I would overshoot and do like four or five. Like mm-hmm. it threw all of my body mo- movements out of, out of whack. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's coming from not doing anything like that ever. You know, when I was, when I was a B-boy, I never did anything like that. When I did judo, I never did anything like that. It was literally the first time I ever took a supplement like pre workout, mm-hmm. and it screwed me yeah. up. Like, I, it, it was like I had, um, it was just weird. Like, the skin itching really bothered me, and like the mm-hmm. jitteriness that I got, like, it freaked me out. Yeah. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a time. Well, two things. Like, back in the day, I, I took no dose, which is kind of not, it's, yeah, it's not a pre-workout or anything. I took like half a pill and I was wired. I, I could not sleep. And yeah. then same thing like that jacked powder. I, you know, I tried it out and same thing, you know, it gave me that burst of energy. But, you know, later on, you know, they found out that they were putting all this stuff in there that's not good for your body and all of that. So it's just like, I tried it once and I was like, never again. And the thing yeah. too is like, that stuff is so, it's, it's short-lived. You know, yeah, it'll get you through the workout, but you know, you're gonna end up dependent on that to get that kind of energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just like you know, I, a lot of that stuff you can do, you know, more naturally. Yeah, it's definitely. just it just takes it just takes you planning your workouts, planning your food, and knowing you you know knowing your body and knowing like what foods are going to give you the energy and then just planning all that stuff out. It's harder in that way, but yeah. Right. So, um, cause these pre-workout drinks are pretty small, you know, and most of these guys are going through these pre-workouts like in a week and it's not supposed to be that it's supposed to be, you take pre-workout when it's ungod, you're ungodly tired. Like you cannot keep your eyes open that's the moment where you take a pre-workout supplement i believe because it picks you up and it and it brings you from down here to like normal instead of bringing you to normal to like god mode and i know sometimes you want to be through that god mode and like what i said there's proper diets and there's proper stuff to do that to give you that proper energy um like black coffee black coffee is a good source of uh like pre-workout and stuff like that so that might be a thought um yeah yeah i i i don't i you know to each his own but for me you know i i can't recommend anything like that it's just you know just do it do it the right way i think just do it in a more natural way Mm-hmm. it's 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 harder you know but you you end up learning you end up learning more about your body that way you know mm-hmm. have you guys ever uh encountered like guys doing steroids on in like during competition yeah well or found out not, that that not, dude was not, on steroids not to my not to my knowledge no and this is my second question have you guys ever encountered that or do you guys know people that are on some roids and like training 
So no. probably, probably, probably. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's yeah. a couple people like the really yeah. jack dudes. Like I'm pretty sure, mm-hmm. but I mean, I don't know. I I've, I've heard some stories about like in competition, people are on roids, especially in MMA. Everybody's like, oh, they're on roids, mm-hmm. they're on I know in bodybuilding, there's roids and stuff like that, but. I never really heard too much in BJJ. I know I'm wrestling a little bit, but not BJJ. So um, there's one guy I kind of suspect was doing. <laughs> these are these are tough. To- these are tough. The tough topics, aren't they? Just one, and uh-huh. that's solely because he was like supernaturally physically strong, and I don't yeah. understand how he got that way. Now, granted. This guy also uh, did CrossFit a lot. Yeah. And I figured, okay, that must be it. But I have this, like, just this voice in the back of my head that was just saying, no, he's Mm -hmm. doing something else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 go ahead. Yeah. It's just, you know, I, um, yeah, I, I just, for me, it's not that serious, you know, for like BJJ and all of that stuff. I, I, I do it because I enjoy it. I do it because it's fun. You know, even if I was competing on a, you know, world-class level, it's still not that serious where you got to take roids and, you know. Talk to that to the, some of the UFC people that have been caught doping and stuff like that. Yeah. It's I mean, that, I guess when it's, it's like. extra edge, man. It's that. I guess when it's like, you know, it's that's what's between you and getting an extra, you know, 50, 60, 70 K, you know, a fight maybe. Yeah. I, I, but for me, I just can't yeah. justify doing that, you know? Yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't feel right winning the, winning the, uh, like a title or something like that. If I was on. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be, it yeah. wouldn't be as honorable to me. I, I believe. Well, you know, yeah. the, the, the thing is there's people like, me and you, Wally and Norman, who wouldn't be wouldn't sit well if we had to win that way, right? Mm-hmm. But there's yeah, other people right. who mm-hmm. have a win at all cost, everything be damned kind of mentality, like that yeah. that cyclist who was winning everything. Uh, um, come to find out, he was dope. That's- Lance Armstrong. Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. they stripped, but they stripped all his titles away. Did you see that too? Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know, for years people were saying, "Oh, he's got like some genetic modification that helps his blood um, process stuff." Yeah, you know? I heard. I heard like Tiger Woods was on, like on some roids at one point in time. I I don't believe that was true, but uh, for golfing, yeah, just to hit that ball <laughs> a little bit further or a little bit harder or whatever. Is. Yeah, roids give you that little extra edge. I know that for a fact. Have I tried it? No. But I've heard stories, and I've heard horror stories from like people back in like the seventies and eighties when they were doing it. Man, they were they're falling apart now. Like yeah. detached, uh, detached pectorals, their testicles are gone, kidney failure, all kind of crazy stuff because of what they did the roids. Yeah. And the thing is, it was roids that weren't properly regulated. You know, mm-hmm. they were they were just doing it on their own, or people were doing like at home stuff. So, did I just break out? Oh no, no. Um, have you ever seen like a lot of the guys who go to ADCC? Not a lot, but there's some guy. If you watch the ADCC trials, there's some dudes who are just like super super huge and super cut, mm-hmm. and they got like an eight pack and and they're mm. super heavyweight and you just look mm-hmm. at them and you're like how did you do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like those are the guys that i wonder about now it's completely mm-hmm. completely possible that they got in that condition on their own mm-hmm. but it, they'd have to have like amazing genetics mm-hmm. and uh, that's what makes me wonder you know it's like how did you do that how did you do that? <laughs> yeah you never know man crazy but i mean it's the world that we live in everybody wants to be on top everybody wants to be looking great everybody wants to look like you know you they're a supermodel and then they're putting their life and you know at risk and stuff like that like i see these like yeah. going back to the pre-workout stuff those guys man when they shotgun double double shotgun nah. 
I did that one time. I was like, nah, this is crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, I think also it depends on kind of like how you were brought up, up in the martial art. You know, if you go to a school where it's like win at no cost, at all costs, and, you know, they're constantly hammering in your head that you have to win and you can't lose and all of that stuff. You know, that can get to you and that can get into your head. And I could see why people take steroids. But, you know, I, I yeah, I just I've just never encountered a school like that. And if I did, I won't be going there. So. Yeah. so, I mean, when I push my students, I try to push them mentally. And uh, what's his name knows uh, knows what I go, what, what I put them through. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think he's paying attention. Okay. Hey, Norman? No. Yes, I'm, I'm listening. Yeah, it's just very like I'm shocking to hear this this topic. Actually, I was just uh, never imagined. I could never imagine people like I know people take uh, like uh, medicines right uh, to boost them up, but uh, yeah. for PJJ, I don't see that from my yeah. limited experience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, to, I, I, right, yeah. it's not that you don't win money, right? If you win a tie, you give yeah. you a medal. That's about it. Well, don't, don't, well, don't don't you if uh, if you but don't if you win like a like a like a, one of those big tournaments you get some kind of prize. Yeah, Sometimes, like I mean, like ADCC. I, I believe there's a big big prize if you win. Yeah, I think I think mm-hmm. the difference is that BJJ is not popularized. Like it's not, you know, you don't see it on TV like UFC all the time. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like mm-hmm. so it's like yeah, you might get some money. You might get a few thousand dollars if you win competitions, but. I can bet you if BJJ was a sport that was televised as much as like UFC or any other sport, mm-hmm. you'll see a lot more people doing steroids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, w- I, I was talking with uh, Master Sui while, one of the after training. I was talking about his uh, judo experience, like his judo career. And uh, so uh, the judo in the Chinese and national, mm-hmm. women's national team was pretty good. And in Russia, it was very good. So, but this uh, the the rules and the laws in China and Russia kind of lose. So they the athletes they all mm-hmm. take all kinds of like drugs to boost them up. Yes, they're yeah. known for that. Yeah. What doping. was that one? Doping. Sorry, yeah. not the medicine. Doping. Yeah, doping. So, uh, so then, well, so then, yeah, and then uh, for you know for them for them for if if they if you win the title right if you win the Olympic uh, gold medal, your life is set, man. You can be coach. Yeah. You can be in the Olympic committee. You can be That's like you, you can be everything. You can be big shot in the country, yeah. especially in China. I mean, it's just like anybody can be a big shot through the Olympic. You can go to yeah. the lately in Asian countries, they they, they these athletes, the famous ones, good looking mm-hmm. ones, they are going to these kind of reality shows. They are going to they go with the slap with singers and actors. They all grouped up, and they're doing reality shows. Mm-hmm. So people just uh, people just watch them through through the internet. Now the internet yeah. is a is a is a key of the money, right? It's a, so I found mm-hmm. that people click on you. That's where the money from. So yeah. then mm-hmm. all the athletes, man, I believe they, I hundred two hundred percent believe that they, they definitely take the dope. They definitely dope. Remember, I don't know if I, mean, I would you... dope. If I'm, I'm not talking about the <laughs> the big 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 picture or how they they morally, right? So if I were yeah, them, yeah. I would I, I would dope too, man. If, if my life is set that way, I would. I'll give it a try. I'm... Yeah. I, yeah it's 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 true it's like if you're, you're like let's say you're you're coming up and you know you're just because i'm from... good looking i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> if you know you're what like saying? Coming, if, if yeah, i yeah. once that i once yeah. that i would definitely do that man. why not <laughs> well i mean i think the difference hear that, hear that. <laughs> i think the difference is that you know if you're if you're basically your whole life and your whole career is dependent on you winning and you doing yeah. these competitions, I can see wh- why someone would do it. Like if my life depended mm-hmm. on it and like, you know, my livelihood depended on it, I'll probably do something to try and get a competitive edge. And, yeah. and we're not only like um, individuals in the world, right? we have families, right? And yeah. if I'm big, I'm a big shot. My whole family gonna be like, have a much easier life, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have yeah, access to a lot of things. So then I'm gonna just like, <laughs> I, I believe yeah. that, and of course, of course, I, I believe. But the BJJ so far, I don't see myself doing that. It's so not necessary, and uh, mm-hmm. I don't see people doing that. I was crashed by a bunch of young young kids, like 19, 20 years old, in the last tournament. Man, when it, at three minutes, I was so tired. Yeah. I was basically trying to pull my guard if I can. I was, that's what I'm thinking. But these kids keep smashing, keep smashing. 
And afterwards, of course, I lost it. And afterwards, I was like, how old are you? 19. How old are you? 18. Mm -hmm. So you don't stop. And then yeah. at that point, I have a reason that, oh, the wire is stronger than the wire is to keep going. And then, uh, that, that, that I can understand. But if you, if you are taking something, then <laughs> I didn't feel that way. I just, I just simply, I felt that they're younger than me. So mm -hmm. I don't see that. Yeah. Still, I just, even though I lost the tournament like that, I didn't, I still didn't see that. Yeah, so small tournament in mm -hmm. going back Go real quick um I, i've told this before on 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 the podcast <clears throat> my one of my last competitions at blue belt um i went up against a guy who had a coach that was telling him to do questionable things for mm -hmm. example like getting somebody into an arm bar and then gator rolling with the arm bar mm. if you know what that does it it severely damages your shoulder socket mm -hmm. Um. Anyways, long story short, after my match with the guy, I went back with our crew, and I sat down. He walks over, pulls out a lawn chair, opens it up, sits down right next to us, pulls out a lemonade, just starts relaxing. And I look at him. He looks at me. I'm like, "Hey, man. Um, your gym and your coach and your crew are all over there. Are you sure you want to hang out with us?" And uh, he was like, "Yeah, I like you all." I was like a little bit puzzled. I was like, "So." Why is that? He goes, because you all are good people. My coach and all my folks over there, they're not. And then I kept paying attention to that coach during other matches during that particular competition. And it was like a, a an all or nothing, do or die, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. attitude. Like when his guys lost, dude's mm -hmm. face went bright red and he lost his mind. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I saw it. I was like, mental note, don't go to that place. And then mm -hmm. Um, that particular mm -hmm. guy became pretty good friends with me and I was trying to get him to come up and train at uh, Pentagon but it, it didn't work mm -hmm. out but still to this day he's like one of my best BJJ friends yeah. you know out, outside of where I'm training and it, it was it was weird to me to see that in action because yeah. this guy was like acting like there was thousands of dollars on the line you know it was a gladiatorial Rome yeah. It, it, it was weird. And I was just sitting there thinking to myself while, while my match was going on with, with this particular guy that, I, that came over and hung out with us. And I was like, I cannot even stand listening to this guy speak. Like, what, what do you mean throat punch me? That was one thing that caught my eye. We were oh. doing judo. And he was like, throat punch him, throat punch him. <laughs> what are you doing? No. I looked, I looked at my butt. My, this, is, this, 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 this is a Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah, and he goes, "Don't worry, I'm not going to do it." I was like, "Okay, that's what's up." Yeah, it's all about mentality again. I mean, psyche. If people literally, they overall they are not stable. They want to win everything in their life. I think those yeah. people they might do it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, but I think it's the, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. No, go ahead. I mean, in the end, we're not gonna fight for world champion again. Like, right? we're not gonna. Uh, I, I know we're gonna go to work right in the spare time. We. We spend yeah. time at the gym, gently and or wherever you want to train, right? Yeah. So I mean, I, I think it's people have I that think, illusion. that think, oh, we encourage people to work strong, uh, I mean, work hard, and then be stronger. But in the end, this is part of your life, right? It's part of you find yeah. you don't find yourself in a sport, but you find a sport in your life. That's that's I think yeah. just like yeah. yeah. So people yeah, have I, all kind of illusions. They think, oh, I, I'm gonna win this, I'm gonna win that, and then eventually I'm gonna fight ufc or the olympic yeah. olympian yeah. I'm just yeah i encourage yeah. that but in the right way but not <clears throat> in the open way man you just yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I mean i mean i think it's like you know i think because like you're saying you know we all the sport is not our life right it's yeah. you know it's just yeah. it's just part of our life we have other aspects to our life we have family we have all this other stuff going on exactly. and i think that's yeah. the difference it's like you know you have people who are you know obsessed with you know bjj and that's mm -hmm. that's all they do all the time and that's that's kind of the mentality that's the sort of person that can end up falling into that kind of mentality of winner you know you have to win at all costs and like well, at the end of the day it's not healthy it's not you know. yeah well it's it's all about uh what we see right you believe what you see so these younger guys they believe oh uh, you know, Conor McGregor became world champion at 22, 23 years old. You know, I, I can do it. But the sacrifices that all these people need to do to get yeah. to that level, 
it's it's, it's it's that's part of their life. If you want to be a UFC champion, you need to literally drop everything that yeah. you're doing and dedicate this whole lifestyle to your, which you might not even make it. Yeah, you know? and the thing is, like, There's, if you're gonna do that, you need to find the gym that's going to support that in a healthy way. Right. But I think another thing too is like going back to like the whole Conor McGregor thing what people don't see it it's it's like a reality tv show you know mm-hmm. they it's already set up you know before he even steps into the into the uh, octagon mm-hmm. you know he business deals are made you know all this yeah i mean nothing not taken away from his talent but there's a lot of stuff in the background that happens so that right. he can get promoted and so I mean that's why like, like if even if he loses he still gets all these millions of dollars so yeah yeah because even like because it did, it doesn't depend on your record there's guys in the UFC that are still what fifteen and zero and they're still making you know beginner level paychecks which yeah. you have Conor McGregor who's already lost his last. I think, Still gaining millions and millions of dollars. You know, yeah. look at look at Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz hasn't won the last four, and that's one of my favorite fighters. But guess what? There's he's he, like Dana White said, he's a, a needle pusher. You know, so they attract the the UFC, the UFC sees these as 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 people. So it's not how you train; it's how you hold yourself up. You know, look at look at just uh, this past weekend. You know, Leon Edwards. Just knocked out uh, Usman, right? Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be big. You, know Nobody... you, saw, you saw the Usman's yeah. respond on the Instagram. He's like, uh, "I love this sport," and congrats to the to Rio. Right. He's like, he showed his quality. You know, he didn't go like uh, really like psyche or mentally like man and all that. But of course, he called Dan and he's like, "I'm gonna kill him." Of course, that's from. <laughs> but he, in the end, yeah. official response was really, really. I mean. Humane. Right, but yeah. but mm-hmm. but who's more popular? Who who do you think? Who do you think is more popular? Carl Usman? Of course, yeah. You can or, they or, check his Instagram. Look or, at his Instagram. Or, he was like, wait, wait, mm-hmm. wait, or the Diaz brothers, right? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> right, the Diaz, the Diaz brothers had they've lost. They're 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 they they, 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 smoke, they, they smoke. I mean, all, like, all day. But but I look mean, but look yeah. how much attention do they get, man? It's crazy. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's you know, for for example, for you know UFC, it's about yeah. how, like you're saying, how much attention can we draw and how many viewers can we bring in. True. You know, it's, yeah. it's a it's a reality TV show at the end of the day, but right. you know the it's it's like a reality TV show where the characters actually have you know actual martial arts talent, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's like who can bring the most viewership. Exactly. And whoever whoever can bring mm-hmm. the most viewership gets Great. the most paycheck. Mm-hmm. And I just like uh, Conor, uh, like McGregor, all that stuff he was talking about and all the shit talking and all of that is just to bring in viewers. It's not exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah, he has he has a role and he's playing it. You know. Yeah. So and, and so like when these kids look at this <laughs> and they think that it's all about oh about like I'm gonna you know I'm gonna be UFC fighter and it's just all about fighting. There's a lot more that goes into it, right? Because you could be, you could train every day and be undefeated, but yeah. if you're if you're not if you're not making that it's attention like or controversial or something, yeah. If if you're not putting yourself in the spotlight and keeping yourself in the spotlight, you're yeah. nothing. You're nothing. Yeah. And hey it's guys, crazy. It, it's yeah. Uh, we got a question from uh, one of our viewers. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Uh, do you think Charles Oliveira, I think it is, is only good at MMA BJJ, or could he have gone down the competition BJJ route? That depends. I believe that depends. That depends on the training that he's done and the coaching that he's done. That this man could have done whichever he wanted. But like I said, like my my boys, right? I have two mats, right? That they're they're just strictly Muay Thai, Muay Thai, right? And maybe down the road we can train him into. MMA, but they their heart is strictly on Muay Thai. That's why you have 
strictly only BJJ schools. This is why you have only strictly Muay Thai, the only strictly karate, because this is the only thing they teach and this is the only thing they compete. So whatever he they he wanted to go with, you know, I believe it's it's the coaching and or what what he wanted to do. Yeah. I don't know if that solved his question. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree. It's, you know, you you have to make that choice at some point, you know, mm-hmm. what, which route you're going to take. And the question really comes down to, do you have the athleticism to, to pursue that path? And do you have the right trainers right to pursue that path? Right, because mm-hmm. weren't, well, like, didn't you come in only doing Muay Thai? Yeah, yeah. I, I started mm-hmm. off, like, strictly Muay Thai. Strictly and Muay Thai. Do, yeah, and I was doing Muay Thai and BJJ, and I picked one because like I was not advancing quickly enough in either of them. So I was right. like, so, I need to focus on one. Yeah, right. So which one did you pick? I I picked BJJ. <laughs> <laughs> so how how long did you do Muay Thai for? Probably about two three years. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I think uh when when I really stopped. Like going consistently, I think I was at like around the ten year mark. <laughs> mm, yeah, and now I'm just like coasting, yeah. just trying to learn new things and, and teach my I mean, students pretty much. Well. Yeah, for me, the 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 reason I one of the main reasons I picked BJJ is because I can compete. It, there's a lower threshold to comp to compete with okay. Muay Thai. You you basically have to be on the fight team. And then you basically have to, you know, it. You have to have your fight set up for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, yeah. You, as opposed to BJJ, you could, you know, wake up tomorrow and be like, okay, I, I want to compete in this competition, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. a month from now. But with Muay Thai, there's a lot more to it. But not not say that I wasn't, you know, um, was was shying away from that. I just, you know. BJJ was really interesting and, you know, just let me compete more, which is kind of what I want to do. Right, right. See, that's the difference. That's the route you took. And I took the whole Muay Thai, yeah. you know, uh, route. And I stuck with it. I love Muay Thai. Muay Thai is my favorite. But speaking of uh, BJJ, I got called out the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, boy. So, it was so bad. I, I was like, <laughs> They're like, they're like, Frankie, you do this whole martial arts stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, what do you, what do you know? I'm like, I'm really, I'm like, I know Muay Thai, I know a little bit of judo and a, and a jujitsu and, and a little bit of taekwondo. They're like, jujitsu. They're like, aren't you like a brown belt already? I'm like, nah. <laughs> they're like, well, what are you? I'm like, I'm a white belt. They're like, you've been training this for like four years already and you're still a white belt. I'm like, yeah, I'm still a white belt. I was like, that's not my main focus. So I got called out so hard. (laughs) Tell them, come talk, tell them, come talk to me. I'm I'm still, I'm still a blue belt and you know, I've been at this for like what, eight years. (laughs) So So I, 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 I didn't take it to offense. I was just laughing and I was like, man, I'm going to be a white belt till like I'm like 50. (laughs) So speaking of speaking of knowing martial arts at the uh, MMA class, um, I did a little bit of sparring with uh, light sparring with uh, other Matt Matt too Matt Wolf. Okay. And you know I have only taken one class in Muay Thai, so I was supplementing my striking with um, some old Ishinryu that I did. I was like, ah, you know what? The, the techniques are similar. I can hang it. <laughs> It, just sparring with him for two minutes showed me why Ish, uh, Muay Thai is superior to Ishin Ryu. <laughs> every time he threw a kick, I blocked it and I dropped my hand so my face was open. Yeah. And on top of that, <laughs> with those Muay Thai kicks, blocking oh, yeah. them with your hand is a stupid idea. Because that's how you get your that's how you get your arm broke. It, right, yeah. or your wrist yeah. or, or fingers yep. or something. So mm-hmm. on top of that. You know, he threw another kick. He threw a left. He threw a um, a round kick to my right, and I blocked my lead hand to block it, or dropped my lead hand to block it, and then he jabbed me in the face. So he threw <laughs> a a round kick to my left, and I blocked it with both of my hands. And as as I saw him about to counter with a punch, I just like jumped back. But I was like, oh, just those two moves, 
just mm-hmm. prove to me why I need to actually just take boxing or stick with Frankie's Muay Thai class or something. Mm-hmm. Because I kept yeah. dropping my hands and exposing mm-hmm. my face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see yeah. this Usman, uh, knockout on Usman? So that's mm-hmm. typical Muay Thai move, I believe. If Frankie is happy, you would be happy to see that, right? It's like a fake one, and this one touch you, and yes. boom, a kick, right? Yes. That's what we're practicing, yeah. I think. Yes. We have been practicing that, but my <laughs> thing, I, I wanna, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you guys want to hear the rest, I'm going to be showing a little bit of something uh, tomorrow about mm-hmm. that. So um, just, uh, it's always important to keep your hands up and yeah. your hands protecting your face because that 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 um uh, that kid could have been prevented yeah that's like a, yeah that was yeah that was like a, go ahead Wally, go ahead i was just saying that's like the first thing they teach you like you know uh uh master bo master chan all of them mm-hmm. every time every time my hands dropped a little bit bam <laughs> you know they yeah. tap me on the head like you know and that's how and, um sugi won his his uh no it wasn't sugi it was um, when Sugi did his match, his MMA match. There's the dude beforehand. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Like he he yeah. had his hands down here. He got a round kick to the head. He got and pulled, t- taken out on a stretcher. Yeah, and this is why it's always good to go back to basics. Go back to basics. Yeah. Go back yeah. to because that's the most basic thing is just to do this. And people forget to do mm. this. And when you're tired, they end up doing this. And it, it shouldn't mm. be like that. When you're tired. And this is where you need to be at if you're tired. Yeah, Usman yeah. is tired. I mean, he's much older than Theo, so I think this is true. But in true, I think he's tired. Yeah, I, I think his team saw that coming, and they they it was just a setup, and then they did it perfectly, and it just came out perfectly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but, same thing with mm-hmm. yeah. Same thing with. BJ. I think the coaching is very important. I'm sorry, Woody. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I mean, the, the coaching, coaching, coach, coaching part is pretty important too. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, if you uh, yeah, the coach versus coach is like a place. At least I, I don't know, Frankie. I'm maybe half of the game, right? Uh, pff, probably more than that, like seventy five percent. Because 75, when I okay. yeah, when I competed into when I competed in BJJ, my first BJJ match, um, it was my last match, and Master C was on the other side of the of the mm-hmm. arena or whatever. It's uh, helping somebody else out, and it was me and. Uh, Dafka, mm. and I and 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 I was like, "Where's Sugi at? Where's Sugi at?" You know, and they're like, "Sugi's on the other side." I was like, "All right, Dafka, I mean, you got this, right?" He goes, "Yeah," <laughs> 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 and he fist bumped me. So I was like, "Okay." So I go in there. This is my last match, and and this is make or break it for third place, right? So I'm over there, and I'm nervous, and, and Dafka is not really saying much, and I'm over here. All of a sudden. You just hear, all right, Frankie, you got this. And it's Master Sugi. And for some reason, my whole body went like, okay, <laughs> let's relax. Master Sugi's here. And at, from that point from that point on, all I heard was Sugi, 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 Sugi throughout the whole time. And and it when you hear your coach have your back, it uplifts you. And it's like, ooh, okay, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay, you know? So yeah. that, that that's why coaching is very, very and always listen to your corner. Don't go in there bullheaded thinking you you know it all, you know, because yeah. they're your eyes. Cause sometimes you'll you'll end up blind, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, all, 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 all yeah. yeah, all you if your head is in in, a, in in someone's belly and all you can hear is all you can do is hear and you don't know where you're at, forget yeah. about it. Or, or you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, and it's not working. Right. But you think it's going, but you think it's going to work. <laughs> yeah, because I think, I think Leo's Leo's coach was was uh, trying to like. I think they had a talk. I definitely discuss about this, right? He's gonna be tired. Watch for your last round. You have the chance in the last round. Go yeah. ahead, young man. Go boy. Go boy. And then I think he mentioned that how he, how he, that's how he did it. I'm just really looking for for the. The Oliver Adira. that we're talking yeah, about, and then yeah. uh, Khabib's cousin, what's his name? Islam, right? On October uh, 20, 20, yeah. Khabib's uh, cousin, Islam uh, Mahiev, Mahiev, Mahiev. So, yeah. so the Khabib style is like they drag people to a, toward the coach coach side and they listen to the coach. How do you do that? Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the Islam and Oliver, they all go spar, and they all go that wrestling and, uh, yeah. and BJJ. Let's see on October twenty second, man. Yeah. It'll be fun. So, yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, like I said, like it's always always good to hear your coach because even in my last mm-hmm. match, for some reason I kept my eyes closed because I I was so dead tired. I was like, at least let me close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing Fall this, asleep. and yeah, and I'm doing all this, and I'm being all crazy, and all, all I all all I hear is Sugi's like, do this, do that, and I'm like doing it. And I'm like, okay, and then there, and I and I got him in a, a Americana, and I won the match, and it was nice. awesome. And I was yeah, dead I think, <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> like you're saying with Muay Thai, also same thing with BJJ. Back to the basics. I always encourage people take a always. yeah, even, a, even if you're a higher belt, take take mm. a basics class once a week. Yeah. You know, it's going to remind yeah. you about stuff you forgot. That that go back to basics and that and train with people that you usually don't train with, like uh, yeah. something different. You know, because you never know. You might see that something different and fix something. You know, yeah. you're so always trying to fix something. Always trying to fix something. Make it tuning, tuning. Make it, make 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 yourself better and better and better, no matter what. On that note, I'm a big fan of people watching other people. Yes, pull and spar. Yes. yes, because something connected to me today, and it was something that Master Sugi had always been telling me to do when I get mm-hmm. caught in reverse scarf hold. And I saw a small clip of Buchecha, um, uh, what do you call it? Promoting a tutorial he has on uh, BJJ Fanatics. And during that small, like five second clip, I saw him do an escape from reverse uh, scarf hold that was exactly how Master Suki described it. And just from watching that, I know how to do it. I'm going to yeah. have somebody get me a reverse scarf hold this week when I can. I'm just going to just drill it. It's always good to watch videos and stuff like that and attempt something especially in training because yeah. that's that's where in training that's where your mistakes need to happen right so in training mm. even if you see it in a movie even because i've done some some movie shit some and it's john like, wick shit yeah <laughs> some like yeah like karate kid like yeah let me try this like crane kick real quick and then let's see if i find if i'm any good at it and if it doesn't work okay at least you had fun do- one you had fun doing it because you tried something that you saw in a movie and two if it didn't work but we know not to do it. And if it did work, then you know it worked. So, yeah. I mean, it's always good to try like new things, new styles, find your own technique, you know? Um, the two mats, they're so different. So their fi- fighting styles are so different. And I'm always, always telling them, look at each other, watch each other's backs, look at what, look where his weaknesses are and where, where you can improve them, especially when you're holding pads or mat or, or focus mitts. Improve your partner, you know? And when we're rolling, Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Thomas. Speaking of which, what I, however you showed uh, Big Wilson how to kick, dear God, he hurt my <laughs> arm holding that stupid kick pad. Yeah. So when you go, when you even when we're rolling, and you're doing a mistake, I say, yo, yo, hey, do this, or commit to this, or hey, push forward more, or whatever it is. You guys need to at least attempt it and keep going with it. Even, you know, not trying, not in bad intentions, but at least, at least once to see if it worked or not. You know, yeah. what what times are the Muay Thai classes? Uh, seven to eight. But uh, if this, if our classes keep getting bigger, I think we're gonna push the time a little earlier for the beginners or later for the beginners. Well, we'll I gotta talk to Sugi more. Oh. But our classes are getting big, are pretty pretty good. Um. Nothing to brag about, but but most most of these people and most of the people there, man, you see them improve drastically, and it makes me proud when I see these. Like my my boy, uh, my boy here, you know, I don't even think he could throw a proper punch, <laughs> and now he's looking. Mm-hmm. Up. What what Good. days? Mondays and Wednesdays. Okay. Yeah. I gotta make it up there at some point. At least, at least it's it's like I I'm I'm using the stuff that I I learned, you know, and yeah. um, I still go train uh, uh, here and there with with like little giant and whatnot, and uh, you know, and they're always teaching me stuff, or I'm always looking, or I'm always sparring with people and see see what I see new, you know. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, everything else has been going great, man. Hey, it's Frankie, poor. did a guy named yeah. Devin drop by by any chance? I'm good with faces, not with names, but boy. Oh, never mind. I'm pretty sure. No, it was it was a guy that um wanted to try out uh, Muay Thai, and he came by during the kids' class. It was just a little, uh, okay. a little strange, but I gave him your, uh, the the class info. Uh, he's like, what does he's he like, look these like? Are, these are the kids I'm going to be kicking around. Yes. <laughs> I was like, well, sir, if you want to join this <laughs> class, you'll be the top student very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, about my height, dark skinned, uh, little long hair. No, short hair. I think he's either short hair like me or balding. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think yeah, I think he signed up. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, he has experience. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. He told yeah. me he did Muay Thai for like three years. Oh yeah, or... oh yeah. I saw him kick the other day. I was like, "Sir, this is not your first class." <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, I, really, do... I think he's in my video. One of my videos. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I think I know. I've seen oh, you video. know what? I think you're right. I think mm-hmm. I did. I think I did see him in one of your videos. I just wasn't sure if it was him or not. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta say, I do love myself a, a good Muay Thai kick. Yeah, That's, yeah. The, the, when when you're throwing it, it's fun. When you're receiving yeah. it, it's not so fun, man. Yeah. It's, so I I see some of the people's legs. I'm like, oh shit! I see some Muay Thai bruises, and they're like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm proud of you. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's like that cauliflower hair thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so, so speaking of which, um, I was on a, doing a demo for work and I don't know how they noticed it, but I didn't have my headphones on. I had everything going through my speakers and one of my coworkers saw that my uh, right ear was a little mangled. Like, Thomas, are you a boxer? I'm like, uh, <laughs> no, nope. I didn't answer the rest of the question. <laughs> Do you fight? Oh, I am skilled at violence and I'm good yes. at it. I, I might have to go get a, like some sandpaper and just like <sighs> all my ears. <laughs> no, do not recommend. Do not recommend. <laughs> no. Or you could just get no. a head kick from here and I'm pretty sure that thing will swell up like a... No, no. That's, 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 that sounds too dangerous. I'll just get the sandpaper. You might and a nice uh, sandwich. You might suffer memory loss too. I mean, Frankie <laughs> kicks kicks pretty hard. No, no. <laughs> I know that man. Frankie's kicks like the song is just boom. I mean, it's really different than other, any other song. It's ever like so heavy, so heavy. <laughs> I got kicked like that. I think my my rib is my kick. My rib is gone. Uh, I, I, I got a spar. Yeah. I got a spar, Frankie man. No, you know we're not. Yeah, I was, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna spark. <laughs> I was thinking about sampling the noise of Frankie kicking the heavy bag and making a beat out of it. Maybe oh, like um, I was hitting the heavy bag the other day, and I guess our neighbors came over and they were like, "What's that noise?" I was like, "It's the heavy bag." And it's like, why does it sound like a bomb? I'm like, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's not like coming bomb, yeah. from here. Hey, guys, another question from the uh, chat. Uh, is yeah. it worth buying a mouth guard for sparring? Yes. For, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. I am going to put a caveat in there, though. If you have asthma, mm. Mm, be very cautious. Well, um, th- yes, or... Or if you go to your local dentist or your dentist, mm. they mold, they make a specialty mouth guard for you. Yeah. Mm. They fit line. Covered by the really nice. mm. Uh no. <laughs> they, look around, <laughs> they look around $500, okay. but tell you what, your teeth will be protected. Okay. I, uh, yeah. I'll say this. I was um, rolling with Ooh, Kelsey. And I don't know what happened. I think a knee went up and hit her chin. She didn't have a mouth guard on, and mm. it's, it like split her lip. I remember yeah, that. Like, I remember or, that. No, no. Or either it split her lip or she bit her tongue. Yeah, so, yeah. I remember. It's it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. with even I feel with so mouth, bad. 
Yeah. Even with a, a, a mouth guard, man, I'll bite the hell out of my tongue, even with a mouth yeah. guard. Yeah. Uh, but the better, I think, I think um, they, at Dick's, they sell. It's a doctor, shock doctor or something? Yes, the shock yeah. doctor ones, the gel filled. They have yeah. a little hole. So when you bite mm-hmm. in, you can, you can still breathe from that little hole. Wow, oh, that's what that's. What's the name? Yeah. What's the name of it? Shock Doctor. Shock they're a little doctor. bit on the. Shock they're not, yeah, they're not even. I, mean, I think they're like around twenty three dollars, maybe. Yeah, they're not, they're, but, they're uh, not that expensive. My they're, my piece yeah. of advice is to like buy the mouse guard and lose them. I bought yeah. two of them, and yeah. I, I don't know where are they. I just keep losing yeah. them. Yeah. I yeah, I why. I've yeah I've lost mine, and I I keep saying I need to buy them because I know one day I'm just gonna bite my tongue off. I ha- <laughs> I had. I've I've had fifty pairs of mouthpieces and I misplace them, lose them. Yeah, I've I've had so many, so many. Frank 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 always asked me. I read it for sparring and I was like, oh, I forgot. Yeah, I, I I got all the gears, but I forgot my mouthpiece. I was like, Hey, Who come was, on. I rem- I think I me. think it was Master. Yeah, no, 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 no. It was Master Chun one time. I think he uh-huh. was like. Oh God, I, I may, I'm, 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 I'm thinking it was him or it wasn't him, but I don't remember. But it was very faint. I remember they're like, they're like, let's spar. I was like, you don't have uh, a mouthpiece. He's like, let me get some toilet paper, and he gets it all wet, and then he molds his teeth into toilet paper. But it's thick, and he's chomping on this toilet paper, and it's a mouthpiece. He's like, when it I was poor, I don't think it was Chun. I don't know if it was Chun, but it was somebody. It worked. They're like put toilet paper in it. Okay, okay. I mean, uh, if it works, it works. It works. Yeah. It works. Oh. I never thought of a situation where I legit put toilet paper in my mouth, but that actually makes sense. I mean, and and Thailand, man, these guys are these the, the Muay Thai is a poor man's sport, pretty much. Yeah. How about because you Thailand? Have I been to Thailand? No, I want to go to Thailand. Oh, you should go visit, Thailand. man. You should. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've heard. <laughs> um, okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a poor man's sport, and some of these guys, they don't have equipment like that. Like, you'll see some of these kids are running with some no-brand Payless shoes that they got from a donation or whatever, and they're running, and they're the best shape in their lives, but they don't buy all these nice equipment or you see these guys with like tie pads, they have tape or, mm. or stuff, something. And, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And if all you got is toilet paper and you got to make a mouthpiece out of toilet paper, that's all you got to do. You know? So question, do you think the experience of going to Thailand to like train Muay Thai would be the equivalent of going to Brazil to train Jiu Jitsu? That's so hard to say, man. Because <laughs> my trainer, he's Thai, so yeah. I, I mean, I want more. Can I get the 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 atmosphere? Maybe, maybe the atmosphere. But he says that it's hotter here than it is in Thailand because the humidity is so <laughs> freaking stupid. Sure. <laughs> he says you guys are crazy out here. I'm like, yeah, but um, maybe the atmosphere, the culture, I guess. The culture mm. of, of it, I think, I think that's that's what you're looking for the experience, you know. That oh, I have been to Thailand and I have trained in Thailand and I competed I think, in Thailand. Uh, I think, uh, what is it, Chima, Chimayev? He was he's been training uh in Thailand for a while before he yeah. was fighting Burns, I think. Yeah, yeah, he was training there. I think, I think it was definitely a, a boot if you are really. Uh, preparing a fight or something yeah. otherwise i think if you're just uh you, you guys have yeah. mm-hmm. you guys have netflix right uh, netflix right? yes mm-hmm. yeah, yeah but i'm not yeah. chilling with you no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh look up the document uh i think it's a docu-series it's a recreation uh, of yeah. an event. it's called hurt like hell mm. okay like hell. so you're you gonna what, say man, Mm-hmm. watch that first episode man watch that first episode i promise you you'll be like hooked to this thing and it's like 
that gives a story on, on I think an incident or an event that happened in Thailand that a lot of things went wrong. <laughs> a lot of things, how corruption and and gambling and politics and just it just it was just an all out yeah. n- nasty event and they say that this happens a lot in thailand and that the thai, the muay thai yeah. sport is a, pretty much gonna die or gonna be banned it's crazy Hurts. it's crazy Hurts that's like, why uh, since, since we're talking Hurts. about uh we're talking Hurts about this you, you, since, yeah. since uh, frankie was talking uh, bringing to this uh, like a politics and all that and that in fact have impact on the sport and on the co- uh, combat sport so i'll try to go back to i try to go back to the original topic like the doping right so they, they <clears throat> um i i, I just uh, want to bring up one example for you guys like a japanese very interesting they have a sumo and they had judo right they have all oh, kinds yeah. of combat mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but do you see that they, they were they were never violent they don't show any of the violence part of the the sport, even though mm. sumo are like heavily like absolute strength. You know, and like those wrestlers are so strong, but they don't want to show one bit of this uh, uh, aggression or like uh, violence part. But look at uh, us in America that we're uh, doing this uh, UFC, right? Like Conor McGregor, he's selling his whiskey and he was walking with like no arm but shoulders you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so and then i mean we're a big country of uh, drugs as well at the same time that's why i think all these factors behind the com- behind the sport is more political or economical things that that yeah. really impact that really making people to think they, they're they're okay for them to dope even in the bjj sport it's not even really like you're winning a big prize on that mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so uh, in, in Japan, the kids who train uh, judo or who, I've been to Japan and I saw these kids who's uh, wrestling, sumo, sumo wrestling. Man, I, I would never seen them. I would, there is not even topic for them to, to think about this doping problem, doping things. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, but no, I, th- I, I get think you, that's, yeah. yeah, that's like a, the, the, the background of this a country or, or nation, like the background really set up these that they, they allow these young kids or the like, like Thomas said, like, uh, people who like psyche who want to win everything, they allow them to go, go for that, go to that route. That's, that's yeah, your it, topic. I mean, I, I, and, yeah. and, and, and this, and this is, and this is what the, that, that, uh, the docuseries is about that sometimes fighters will, will get doped, will get drugged just enough to tip the, tip, tip the scales or someone pays the referee and stuff like that so they can mm-hmm. win or both. And it's crazy, it's crazy on how corrupt a Muay Thai is. And that's why yeah, I think, when, Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. but when you fight here in the States, that's all gone. You but, know? You've seen that, I mean, those, uh, but you've seen those, but you've seen those Japanese uh, sumo wrestlers, right? The, yeah, the yeah, dominant yeah, yeah. ones are, Mon- are Mongolians. I've yeah, never yeah. heard about they talk about this uh, like doping thing or whatever. It's just all, well, they can, I mean, all, all they can do I mean, is eat. Like, yeah, with sumo yeah. too, though, there, there is a lot of there's corruption behind that too. The, you know, like stuff like. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, like there's stuff like, like gang, all kind of forces. Mm-hmm. Gang, gang involvement yes. and all of that stuff. And I yeah. think it's just like, go, it's like you're saying, you know, the difference I think is the culture, you know, like the culture. The culture. Here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. has a lot to do with a lot of bravado and you know talking shit yep. and stuff like that but that that's yep. not the culture in like japan the culture is in that so that's yep. that's not nobody's mm-hmm. really gonna want to watch all of that you know yeah mm-hmm. yeah so that in that case in that in the japanese like a uh, case that they really don't have this topic like they don't have the concern of like a doping doping problem mm-hmm. yeah yeah so yeah thought, yeah mm-hmm well, guys, I think I got to call and I got to work tomorrow. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah we can final, thoughts. final thoughts. Yeah. All right, I'll Ooh. go first on the final thoughts. <laughs> um, just be careful on how you take your supplements and stuff like that, man. Like this shotgunning stuff, it should stop, honestly, because it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to cause some issues down the road. Um, that stuff is supposed to be take, monitor it, you know? But uh, other than that, train hard and respect each other. That's all I say. 
Wale? I would say just say no and stay <laughs> natural. <laughs> ah, there we go. There you we go. you, like you can do it. You can do it the natural way. Just My say man. no. I like that. I like that. I mean, uh, it's more enjoyable when it's natural. I mean, it's uh, if you're adding something on your on this uh, existing sport, uh, existing the thing you're doing, then you, it costs more like uh, your own energy to think about that way, right? So for mm-hmm. me, it's like uh, go natural and enjoy the sport. That's the most important thing. Don't add anything extra. It's extra. If unless your life is set. When you win the BJJ title, and then you're gonna be yeah. <laughs> a king of BJJ. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody gonna be like like nobody gonna be like that, right? Yeah. So no. enjoy it. Yeah. Arguably, Thomas. Gordon Ryan. Um, uh, say no to drugs. Drugs are bad, okay. And uh, okay. don't sh- don't shotgun <laughs> pre workout because <laughs> it sucks. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, guys, have a good night. Great. Man. All right. Later. Good night. Good night.